Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about the electron transport chain. So we'll start with the basics. The ETS is the third and final stage of aerobic respiration and it utilizes the products of glycolysis in the Krebs cycle, the cofactors NADH and FADH2. Um, a side note, NADH is not the same as the cofactor NADPH, which is used in photosynthesis. The ETS produces the vast majority of ATP, which is the goal of aerobic respiration, and it takes place in the membrane of the mitochondria, specifically in the folds, which are called cristae. Now, if you remember from our unit on the organelles, uh, the mitochondria has many, many folds, and the abundance of these folds is what allows the mitochondria to produce great amounts of ATP um, because there is much more surface area for the rea reactions to take place in. And the ETS, as suggested by its name, is driven by the movement and transport of electrons provided by the NADH and the FADH2 from protein to protein within the membrane. So let's get a little more specific here. And by the way, here's a helpful hint. As we move through the process, it's good to keep track of the number of input and output molecules. Um, so if you look at the numbers we have provided here, these are just for one molecule of glucose. So as we move from the inner matrix of the mitochondria to its folds, 10 NADH and 2 FADH2 cofactors donate their electrons and hydrogen ions. The electrons are bounced from one embedded protein to the next, and with each bounce, they release a small amount of energy, which, like in photosynthesis, is used to actively transport hydrogen ions through the membrane into the outer compartment, which sets up a hydrogen ion gradient. The hydrogen ions then diffuse through the membrane into the inner matrix through ATP synthase, creating up to 34 ATP molecules. And now, after this, these ATP molecules are combined with the ones created previously in the process to equal up to 38 total molecules. So if you look at the diagram here, it shows all that happening. These are the two cofactors, and these arrows represent the electrons that they're donating, and they're bouncing through the membrane. And as this happens, these hydrogen ions are pulled outside, creating this gradient. And as we know from our units on diffusion, they tend to want to spread out, so they'll be forced to go back through ATP synthase, which generates this production of ATP, which is what we want. <coughs> This little key in the corner shows you where this is all occurring relative to the mitochondria. This orange is the outer, outer compartment, excuse me, and this lighter color represents the inner matrix. So we've made uh, ATP, that means we're done, right? No, no it doesn't. Um, we still have all these electrons from the electron transport chain to handle. Um, when the electrons reach the end of the electron transport chain, they're accepted by six molecules of oxygen. These um, oxygen are then combined with two hydrogen ions each to create six molecules of H2O or water, um, which is the final product of cellular respiration. Um, our other product, carbon dioxide, is created during the Krebs cycle, as you can see in the diagram. Um, so the hydrogen ions that are used can be any old proton that's floating around the cell, or they can be some of the hydrogen ions that were diffused through the ATP synthase um, to create ATP. So a little reminder about the reciprocal nature of photosynthesis and aerobic respiration. Uh, so photosynthesis begins with the light dependent reaction, which is an electron, electron transport system. And it moves on to the Calvin cycle, which is, of course, cyclic, and then ends with the process of creating glucose, which is linear. Aerobic respiration, on the other hand, begins with glycolysis and the prep step, which is a linear reaction. Then it moves on to the Krebs cycle, which is cyclic, and ends in the formation of ATP, which is an electron transport system, and it ends with the formation of water. Um, and then with regards to the products and the substrates, as you can see, they are also reversals of each other. Um, so what goes into photosynthesis comes out of cell respiration. And what goes into cell respiration comes out of photosynthesis. So as I said earlier, what we showed you was just one molecule of glucose. However, we're using way more than one molecule in our bodies. 
That's right. We're actually using like more than you could even count in every single cell of your whole body. So while we think of this as like a series of reactions that is just going in a straight line, it's really not. It's like circling around and around again and again simultaneously all the time. So that's just to keep everything in perspective. So hope you learned a lot about the electron transport chain. <laughs> Blah, 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 blah. This is a cell respiration stuff. This is it. Yep, yep. So cool. <laughs> and yeah. The products of glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. The cofactors NADH and FADH2. Um, so just. Um, so. Um, I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> I just forget everything I was just saying. <laughs> Keep in mind that NADH is not the same as NADPH, which is used in photosynthesis. Why am I so terrible? You're can we, can about we it? cut yeah. it and re- and just do this part again? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Crap. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have to watch the video. Yeah. I'm sorry. sorry. What is your problem? <laughs> sorry, I won't look at you. Yeah, I'm sorry. That was a really good first try. Okay. Guys. <laughs> I replay that moment when I saw you for the first time. I like her. Hey guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, just, I didn't realize Bye, guys. I started recording.